Our cricket expert, Boria Majumdar, now joins me for the latest on this big breaking story. Boria, you have the latest cricket. South Africa is up in arms. The big three versus the rest. And the cricketing world clearly divided into two, Boria. Absolutely. You know, the Cricket South Africa officials are sending a nine-page letter to Alan Isaac. It starts with a quote. Uh, I, I have access to that letter. They read it, read it out to me. It starts with a quote from Nelson Mandela, and it goes on to say that the ICC revamp plans are against the democratic principles that Cricket South Africa and Nelson Mandela stood for. So there is absolutely no way Cricket South Africa can accept these plans. Another couple of hours later, Chris Nenzani and, and Harun Logat will leave uh, South Africa for Singapore. Uh, I can tell you that uh, Cricket Sri Lanka has already rejected it. Cricket Pakistan Cricket Board, a couple of days back, they had an executive board meeting and Zaka Ashraf, the president, has been explicitly told by the PCB governing body and the executive board that you cannot support the proposals. And this comes now, this nine-page letter from Cricket South Africa, you were absolutely right when you said the two fundamental objections are against revenue distribution and second on the issue of governance. They even spoke to me about how this revenue distribution model is, is flawed and went on to say that if the ICC generates more revenue than the rest of the world, you know, South Africa, the other team, uh, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, etc., they stand to get less. So it's not a model that they, uh, they try and understand. They clearly told me that if you are a corporate director of a particular board, you need to understand that what is the brain, what is the analogy, what is the logic behind this revenue distribution model that has not been explained to any of these boards yet. They demand for greater transparency, they demand for far greater accountability within the ICC. I have never seen the ICC divided like this. India, Australia and England on the one hand, South Africa, Sri Lanka, Pakistan on the other. This is real, real problems for world cricket. World cricket is at a crossroad. Mr. Srinivasan came out yesterday and said a strong India is good for world cricket. Now clearly India faces challenge. Question is, if the BCCI and the Big Three are not able to push these resolutions through on Saturday, they will not be able to do so if three boards are aligned against them because they need eight votes. Then what happens to the resolutions? What happens to the revamp plan? What happens to the ICC? And what happens to the credibility of the BCCI? As of now, as on today, 5.30, you know, today, I can tell you, at this point in time, the chance of the revamp plan going through is practically zero. South Africa, Pakistan and Sri Lanka are firmly, firmly aligned against it. There was some talk of the new proposal being deferred for some time. Ehsan Mani has been insisting that instead of this revamp, go talking about the big three plus two, it should actually talk about the big three plus four so that the big three do not enjoy a veto. Uh, is that proposal being considered or is that being put in cold storage too? No, I don't think that is being considered. What is now being objected to is the fact that three members, India, England and Australia, they are saying they have permanent position in the ICC executive board. That that is being contested. It is being said that that is anti-democratic. That is oligarchy. That is cartelization of world cricket. South Africa is very clear that if India, England and Australia enjoy a permanent position in the ICC executive board, even if it's five members, seven members, doesn't matter, then it's clearly a breach of democratic principles. That is what they are against. They are not willing to compromise on this fact at all. They are against the principle of governance. They are against the fact that these three will have a special power or a special privilege. They are against the fact that revenue distribution model that is being proposed. So as I said to you, first it was Pakistan. Two days back, Zaka Ashraf has been explicitly told by the governing body of the PCB that Zaka Ashraf cannot support these proposals in the meeting at Singapore. Sri Lankan Cricket Board came out yesterday evening and South Africa Cricket Board is sending this nine-page letter to Alan Isaac today. So it's a very, very difficult time that world cricket is entering. We will have to monitor developments over the next 48 hours. And believe you me, there's something very dramatic in store over the next 24 hours, which we once again promise our viewers we will first break on headlines today. Clearly here, with world cricket divided between the big three on one side, uh, India, Australia, England on one side, and South Africa, Pakistan, Sri Lanka on the other, what's the road ahead, Borea? See, it's very difficult to say because, you know, from what I understand, uh, the BCCI, ICC uh, revamp proposed by England, uh, Australia and India now has hit a roadblock. 
you know, unless some last minute compromise is stitched through, which I don't see happening, because Sri Lanka, Pakistan and South Africa are hell-bent. In fact, that's what I said, wait for some dramatic developments over the next 24 hours. I know for a fact that something very dramatic is going to unfold over the next 24 hours, which we will break on headlines today first and bring it to our viewers. But it's not going to be easy. It is not going to be easy for the big three to challenge these boards because they've now come together. They're constantly in dialogue. It's not as if they are sort of not speaking the same voice. I can tell you that all these boards are constantly in touch with each other over the last three days. They're speaking the same voice. They're talking to each other and they're now united. They're united against the big three. So it's the big three versus the small three, if you want to put it that way. But the fact of the matter is ICC and World Cricket is now at a crossroad. Resolution, I don't see that in sight. I don't see the resolution being passed. I don't see the revamp happening. I do see that, you know, ICC will be fractured. ICC will, will now be divided. What about the BCCI? India has always thrived on the fact that the subcontinent has been united. Bangladesh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka and India have always taken the lead at the ICC. But now India finds itself isolated with Pakistan and Sri Lanka opposing the BCCI. In a situation like this now, the ICC executive committee, the financial committee, the commercial affairs committee, the proposals that the BCCI has, uh, how does that impact, how does that change the way the world of cricket functions, Borea? See, from what I understand, and I'm not going to tell you uh, the sources because it's very confidential information, the fact is, from what I understand, none of these resolutions will be allowed to pass on the 8th. They are saying, let us defer it to the ICC annual meeting in June because each of these resolutions require a special majority of eight. At this point in time, the big three do not have the special majority of eight. The ICC will have to be you know, maintaining a status quo at this point in time going forward. And only in June can something happen. And before that, lots of drama will happen. Because uh, you know, some meetings are in the offing, back channel negotiations are in the offing. Maybe even uh, 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 you know uh, an olive branch from the big three, because this this news was also broken on headlines today that you know contrary to claims that the BCCI is is negotiating with Cricket South Africa, that Harun Log at Independent Inquiry at the ICC will will be given up with Cricket South Africa support. They've scuttled that also. They've dispelled that rumours. It's now a hardening of stance. It's a hardening of stance against the big three. And the important thing is they are now speaking the same voice. That is unprecedented in world cricket. It's a show of rare unity against the big three. And that tells me that world cricket is having some difficult times ahead. Borya Majumdar, keep tracking that story. I will come back to you for more. As Borya was pointing out there, the world of cricket clearly divided the big three on the one side, India, England and Australia on one side, South Africa, Pakistan and Sri Lanka on the other.